recording. So I have a few questions for you. First off, what initially drew you to the coming to the weekend? I you did. Yeah. I wanted to do it. Uh, we wanted to do it in February and it wasn't good timing because we were having a baby in February. And I wanted to even knowing the skills for myself and us integrating them already, I wanted to have a chance for us to experience a workshop instead of just try kind of going it alone and figuring out how to integrate it ourselves. Um, and being a practitioner, it's different when I get to be in it than learning it for other people's. And Alex, how was that for you to go, even though it was Hannah's idea? I always assume half of the people there have been <laughs> dragged by the other half. <laughs> I, yeah, and I, I would like to think that we have enough balance in our relationship that if I really didn't want to do it, I would say, I really want to do this, and that would be respected. But so my experience was that it was really important to Hannah. She, I do know she talked to me about it in February and then I kind of forgot about it and she kept bringing it up and it kept kind of not becoming the highest priority to put that into place. Sure. Um, but it, it definitely was, well, it, it definitely was Hannah's impetus, Hannah's, mm -hmm. um, idea but I've always you know I've I've thought a lot about therapy for a long time and I've got friends that go to couples therapy who have a great relationship and I always think of it as a little tuning mm -hmm. taking taking your vehicle in for mild maintenance as opposed to huge repairs mm -hmm. and so I, I was I knew it was a good idea I had no idea what to expect and I was honestly kind of scared going into it um, because being super open about my feelings and emotions is not something that I've been great at. Yeah, sure, makes sense. And then knowing that you were scared going into it, now that you're on the other side of it, uh, I don't know. Did you have good reason to be scared? <laughs> that was smart. Or what What do you think as you kind of sit with? Yeah, I mean, it's incredibly emotionally um, vulnerable. So yeah, I do think that there's good reason to be scared. But that doesn't mean that it's a negative experience. I had nothing but positive experiences. Um, but I think anytime you're going into an emotionally vulnerable experience, mm -hmm. it's fair to be to feel scared yeah. um what i've taken away and i've told multiple people this is for years i've never really felt emotions like you know i i, I have sensations in my body but i i can't often say that they're mad sad scared especially mad and um and so I've been thinking of it as like buttons and you push a button you feel mad you push a button you feel sad but for me it's felt like I like, kind of like princess in the pea like I had pillows and pillows and mattresses and all this stuff piled on top of my buttons so I would feel mad but somebody would really have to like jump up and down on my mad button for me to get mad like it was muffled or it took a lot to get to the feeling. It took a lot to feel the feeling. Um, and you could say that that's also muffled. Um, but I, since the weekend, hmm. um, I feel like all of those buttons are exposed. Oh. Um, and all of the pillows have been taken off. And then I actually, I'm aware, oh, I feel happy right now. This emotion yeah. is happy. Huh. I feel mad. I was telling one of my coworkers 
about how hard it is to, sorry, I'm going on a whole rant. This is great. Keep going. Uh, how hard it is to have such turnover because on one hand, I'm really sad to see really good people leave the organization. And on the other hand, but because I know that there isn't any opportunity for them in our company, I have to be happy for them and be excited for where they're moving. And it's, that's a con conflicted feeling. Yeah. And I'm telling her this and literally choking up at the same time. And that never would have happened before because I've never felt like my buttons are exposed, my nerves. Yeah. So. Wow. Any yeah. thoughts about how that happened? Like what was the process for you to have taking the pillows off or why is it different now? Um, I'm going to change analogies. It's kind of like cleaning teeth or, um, doing a, sculpt, a stone sculpture where I felt like throughout the weekend it was chipping away, chipping away. But Saturday night, I was really in my head about some of the things that I had said mm -hmm. Saturday evening at the end of the, the training and really felt just was beating myself up and stressed and very conflicted and I walked in one of the first things that you talked about was how uh, yeah I can't remember exactly but you said you need to tell yourself you're doing your best I don't remember the exact situation but I felt just like the last piece of rock was removed and or the last pillow was taken off or whatever and it just felt like I could breathe, it was raw, like it was very, very sensitive, but in a good way, mm -hmm. um, very open, open to feeling all the things mm -hmm. at that point. Um, and I told you this over the weekend, but when I've done therapy with you and just other times afterwards, I've just felt exhausted. And as soon, soon as that moment happened, I felt emotionally drained, just like I could fall asleep right <laughs> where I was. <laughs> oh, wow. so, so very, very, very positive. And here we are a week out and you can still say that. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it was also hard. Mm -hmm. And I still say I was right to feel scared. And if we went again in a weekend or a week or two weeks, I'd probably still feel scared going into it. Sure. Sure. But the takeaway, the awareness, the reflection, the connection that we had is like nothing else. Mm -hmm. Anything you want to add, Hannah, for your own experience or your experience of each other or mm -hmm. Alex? Or I've been surprised how much else has changed for us in the last week. Like things that we had been stuck on or had kind of felt stagnant in other aspects of our lives are snowballing and moving now. And so the seeing how the shifting into creative brain went beyond how are we creative in our relationship, but to Alex having been thinking about a business idea for a year, a long time. And on the drive home, he had a name for it and was start like creating an online calendar so people could book services with him. And it just was suddenly available. And I think us interacting, that feeling more aliveness from you, Alex, like all that raw emotional stuff is so much more available. So I'm like, oh, here you are in ways that I wouldn't have complained about before, but now that it's different, it's very refreshing and it's so clear and less like, I have to squint to see what's going on. Um, 
I would call it, yeah, I would say it's refreshing and very like, oh, we can just have this moment and move past it because we can have the language and the communication for it in a way that we weren't using it before. And mm, yeah. I, yeah, I don't know. I think that's probably, without getting really rambly, the best I could put it is. Was, yeah, terrific. So very clear and energizing. And there's times when he's like, what's happening in your body? And I'm like, will you leave me alone? <laughs> <laughs> oh, we've gotten past those two. And then it. Yeah. I, I'm sort of pausing. Well, I am pausing just to look at you, Alex, to see if you want to add anything, which was Hannah just said, or is there more? No. Um, I'm suddenly aware of my body position and that I yawned, but I actually completely agree with anything. Okay. Everything Hannah said. I I was just thinking about when we got the closer and closer we got to home, mm. I was getting really tense and agitated like I could just feel this I'm going back to life where I don't get to do what I want to do whenever I want to do it right I was still in creative brain <laughs> I'm like, go well. and it felt you know and I was like, oh, I'm just mad. I'm, I, we have all this stuff to do and here's how we have to, you know, I don't know, feel, I would, if I was in that, I would say I was overwhelmed and I was getting really cranky and Alex was like trying to problem solve. And finally, I, when I landed my body, I was like, I'm so sad and cried about being sad that our weekend was over. And that was like, I, I don't know. I didn't recognize that feeling before that moment, even though I didn't want to have any sensations. And after I cried about it, which only lasted about 60 seconds, Alex said, oh, well, okay, we'll leave all the stuff out here. Or we'll do this. And I said, I don't, that doesn't matter anymore. So <laughs> all the kind of controlly things I was getting into as we got closer to home, once I got to say how sad I was and be sad, mm -hmm. they didn't really matter anymore. Yeah. And yeah. Mm -hmm. so. mm -hmm. Well, this is so great. And so I'm going to ask you a couple more specific things and then either Alex can go take a nap because I don't know. This Sunday afternoon, maybe your, your body's going into this reflexive relaxation now. <laughs> uh, I think it's more of the emotional, like uncovering that. Um, it, it feels like a similar tired to that, like therapeutic teeth cleaning, emotional <laughs> teeth yeah, cleaning. The release, yeah. 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 Well, um, what would you say to another couple or other couples or other people about this? About, I don't even know what the question is, but you know, you're talking about folks. Have and something. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. Um, that almost every argument or every discussion, let's, let's take the word argument out because it kind of got Hannah and I stuck at the beginning. So like we don't argue we don't yell at each other yeah but yeah. we have lots of disagreements and lots of power struggles almost every single disagreement conflict in a relationship is a offensive defensive battle um and what i would say is that you learn how to get out of that and you learn how to ask questions without making it about yourself without becoming defensive i it still stands out to me a week later that every time that we watched you do sew 
never once did you bring in outside ideas or outside people. Every single time it was what's going on with you? What's happening in your body? What are your sensations? What does that mean to you? And they got to only talk about it from their perspective. And if it ever got to, well, this person did this to me, you would bring it back to, okay, but what's happening to you um, and in your body? And even yesterday, um, I slept in because I went to bed at midnight and then was up at 2.30 feeding Theo. And so um, Hannah said, okay, well, I'll do the morning. I'll let him sleep in. I realized yesterday, I don't like sleeping in because I feel <laughs> behind on the day if the kids are already awake I can't just come in and like just be a bump on a log and come in and then you know the dog hasn't been walked and there isn't a plan for food and all this stuff well I told Hannah all this and almost immediately she started saying well I fed well I said I'm trying really hard not to take it personally because the reflex was that when when he's saying like oh I got up and the kids hadn't been fed and the dog hadn't been walked that it was like just like oh you think nothing's happened all morning <laughs> and, and rec like it was like I I still felt it but I had enough to comment like i I'm not going to take this personally, but it certainly sounds like you don't think I did anything for the last two and a half hours. And it, yeah, sorry. Yeah. And, and so I felt, she said that, and I felt myself start to go shut down for a moment. And we had enough because of the tools we learned, we had enough wherewithal to say, this is what's happening to me this is my experience this is how i feel and i don't like it and it is contributing to me feeling mad um and i felt mad well and it allowed the whole conflict to transition to dissipate to turn into creativity in, with the day because even just as simple as like Hannah had been up for two hours and had thought of oh today I want to do this and I want to go to the American West Heritage Center and then I get up and I don't know any of those plans and so Hannah's moving the day along and I'm running behind her going wait you also he suggested that we he asked me if I wanted to be playful and then we did what we did in one of the role plays where there wasn't really a lot of talking just like physical play which seems to work really well for us where it's not the analytical like verbal stuff but the pushing against each other and then I don't know all just just movement play together and that was sort of the thing that helped us shift. And Alex said he had a story that I was the good parent and he was the shitty parent. And I said, what if we were both good parents? And uh, one, like, what if it's possible that just because you slept in doesn't mean you're a bad parent? And um, you also had the story that you were in trouble, which, has happened before but wasn't really happening yesterday and how much that was about like you anticipating being in trouble and not really how I was acting and then we shifted and I was like okay I'm gonna go take a shower so mm -hmm. yeah. whatever you want to do and we had a really great day yeah wow. so that was a very long monologue to say you learn tools to get out of power struggles to get out of conflict uh, and to own your own experience and most importantly allow the other person to own their own experience does that feel true to you mm -hmm.
Yeah. Just uh, thinking about the in trouble and good, because there's a reason to come. Oh, it's in February, not April. That's when I planned the next one, late February. Oh. So I don't know if that's possible. I know it's a drive and film. Anyway, teaser, personas. Um, okay, so just, I think maybe one last thing, which is about the whole issue of power and power up, power down. And it seems like, oh, you two kind of really could, that spoke with spoke to you. So you. Where, what did you learn? I don't know if you want to, any of your experience about that, but then what have you taken ahead or taken with you? Um, I, I can speak to, I, it didn't, I didn't need the workshop to know that I was trend toward the more power over person in our dynamic. And I definitely swirled around in guilt about being power over when we were there, which is like, like I shouldn't do that. I had that kind of idea of if I had been better then that wouldn't have happened and kind of coming to peace with the value of that part of me. Um, but also being able to see when it's happening and why, when I'm using that, when I'm engaging in it. And there's times when it's beneficial and there's times where it is more disruptive to our dynamic, like Alex feeling small and not, considered um and one thing I've noticed is I'm more likely to do things for myself this week that I would normally be like Alex will you do 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 do, do for me and like thinking about how power plays a role in that sort of masking favors and how again I'm going to use refreshing again but how refreshing it is for Alex to step into his power because it's a relief to me to not have to do all of that and I'm like loving that <laughs> today with power yeah oh you asked me I was on the phone and Alex asked me he said, I'm cleaning the kitchen and the kid needs one of our, Ju yeah. you know, Juniper needs to get all this paint wash off of her and don't be on the phone forever. And I got off the phone within a couple minutes and he's like, wait a second. <laughs> I'm proud of myself for asking for what I wanted because yeah. my fear, I was trying to make lunch. I was trying to clean the kitchen. Theo was uh, in the living room. Juniper was running around and needed a shower. And Hannah went downstairs to show Judy the electrical stuff she's been working on, which could be two minutes or could be 45 minutes. And I said, hey, these are the things that I see. Please don't take too long. Okay. And she was back up in two minutes. And I looked at her and I said, thank you very much for hearing me. Oh, uh. um, I'm proud of myself for asking. <laughs> and <laughs> I also feel really bad about that you got off the phone so quickly. Oh, kind of and she went, no, no, no stop there I said you're right I'm proud of myself for asking and thank you for hearing me I'm gonna say what I oh. want and get what I want it's like oh no <sighs> um, yeah power over power under was probably so how to use SEW was a huge learning thing because I know all about it. I had learned about emotion sensations and wants from Hannah but not in actual practice. So SEW is great. But really, I think power over, power under, and how that affects your relationship was really probably my biggest takeaway um, from the weekend because, and, and working through it together was really amazing because like Hannah said, she lived in guilt for a little while. And then we did a, something the next day where I realized how um, power under can create these other things. It's not villain victim. It's, it goes like both you're directions. Being power under requires, requires mm -hmm. power over. Yeah. Um, 
And so that, that was really fascinating. And I'm something I'm still trying to balance is when I notice the power over, how do I try and hold my power without pushing Hannah? Mm-hmm. Um, and it's something that I'm still trying to figure out the best way to do it. And so it's still a learning process. And it's been really very impactful for our relationship. I feel also really aware of times that I don't want to have, I'm hype, more hyper aware, I guess, of the ways that I try not to have a feeling. Mm. And I, I don't think I recognize those moments as clearly before, but now when I get really quiet or distant or avoidant, it is really obvious to me and it's really obvious to Alex and that SEW piece there. It's hard to ignore now. I can't get away with it for as long, (laughs) even for myself. so, and I would, I think what I would tell another couple is just to, to do it and not have an expectation about what their outcome is going to be mm-hmm. from it, that it's humbling. And if you don't have an end, like, oh, by the end of the weekend, we'll have this, or then you get to be open to and surprised by what comes up instead of being in trying to control it coming out a certain way at the end wow oh so much rich rich feedback thank you thank you it's it's amazing and um yeah i don't know do you have anything else that you want to say i stopped taking notes i figured i'll just have do some app and transcribe it that way and I'll let you know if we use this for something. I'm grateful that we took the time and I'm grateful that we made the investment that the, Mm. the cost benefit ratio is very, very high that it wasn't hard. You know, we're always making financial choices and it's all, it was not hard to commit to this and not hard to make the financial and time investment in it. Um, and there's things that are equal value that are, are equal cost that I struggled with the decision more than this weekend because we got so much out of it and wouldn't hesitate to keep investing in our relationship in this way. So. And the other thing I would say is we were in Boulder where you know, this family lives like Lolo lives what three minutes? Like yeah, five right. minutes. <laughs> Could we get closer? <laughs> Out Boulder, yeah, exactly. And we made a point of getting a hotel mm. and staying away from everything else and just taking time together. And if there's yeah, any smart. way, really smart. If there's any way that you can advise couples <laughs> to do the same thing, like yeah. oh, who the couple like. Trevor and anyways, the other couple that went home to their kids every night. Yeah. Obviously they had their own responsibilities and we can't we can't put our experience on anyone else, but if they had if anybody has the opportunity to go to a hotel, I I say Or dedicate the weekend. Like we brought work and didn't do any of it. Mm -hmm. That it's like you're not trying to squeeze it in between oh well we're gonna rush to breakfast with this person and then then go to the thing and then as soon as it's over we'll we're having dinner with blah 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 that the extra time was super valuable so glad we didn't have our kids there and we love our kids but (laughs) if we had had to go from that straight into dinner dinner and and bedtime it would it, it wouldn't have allowed for the same extended creativity extended periods of openness and time to integrate the time to integrate the concepts and the information I think that's what the extra time gave us was was the integrating part and 
we've kept integrating it i guess mm -hmm. that's the word that came to my mind when you were talking earlier was you knew the concepts but it had you hadn't integrated mm -hmm. it mm -hmm. over the time yeah. Yeah. well that's true i also don't think i knew how to integrate it mm -hmm. um and so i got to practice for 48 hours yeah yeah practice practice yeah. and see other people and yeah, over and over. I, I filled out the written form i thank you very much yes you are oh. one person who did that so <laughs> thank you hannah really <laughs> yeah yeah i might really send it but i know people are busy you know one more damn thing but still yeah okay well i said on there that combine do switching between working with your partner and working with someone else was really valuable that aspect in itself where you weren't always doing the thing with your partner and then you could practice something and then come back together with them it was it i think it enriched the the experience that we didn't get siloed into our own little like mm -hmm. thing yeah. and working with other people gave different insights and hearing about like when they would talk about their themselves or their relationship it would spark stuff for us or for me and then oh yeah oh wow you see that in your relationship oh this is how I could apply that idea to me so working with other couples was also really fun and valuable yeah. and the potato scrubber example is just like so <laughs> so perfect <laughs> so good <laughs> well, and I was even in reactivity like not reactivity but I wasn't in open focus creativity when they were talking about it so as soon as you open it up for other people to be creative and I think it was Trevor said I'm 40 years old and I don't even know what a potato scrubber is. <laughs> <get rid> of... <laughs> uh -huh. um, uh, it was so fun just to, and you could just immediately feel any tension just lift yeah. as soon as somebody had creativity. It was great. Yeah. Getting to experience the shift, like not just hearing about it, but experiencing it. Experiencing the shift. Yeah. Yeah. Was, and like I've had, this is a side, not personal note, but at work, I've been so much more embodied with my clients this week, like running around the office, like, oh, you're scared. Let's be scared. And then we're like running around like scared animals. And then finally she's like, no more fear and like <laughs> then she's mad and I was like it's happening and, and she's I'm like oh my jaw's really tight and she's like mine too and she looks at me and she's like how did you do that <laughs> and she's like how did you know that's what I was feeling and I was like that's limbic that was like the limbic resonance and it just blew blew her out of the water and I was like the, I had a whole day where the, basically 75% of my sessions, I got to do that. And it was so cool. <laughs> so cool. So cool. Because I want to know, you know, it's like, oh, I have to know the thing. Uh, yeah. Or where I'm afraid to go into a feeling. So I'm avoiding it. And there we're just both avoiding it and talking about it like it's not happening. And treating social anxiety which is my supervision question right like i did it with my socially anxious kid and she thought it was hilarious <laughs> it was so much i was like oh yeah i don't know i don't have to know you don't have to know and i told her that i didn't know i was like here's the funny thing i don't really know <laughs> and it's been i want to go back to something i said earlier that and I think I said in the weekend that if I'm having a conversation with Hannah and I'm doing SCW with her and she's discovering her sensations, emotions, and want, but besides asking questions that are written on a paper, I don't matter. 
<laughs> and I see, and and like that yeah. might sound, yeah, it's true. But really, like that's what I got out of every time I watched you do SCW. You, you did not matter. I did not matter. No, nope. it didn't matter. What you wanted to do with the potato scrubber, and or your idea of what's right. Yeah, and I've taken that into so many conversations since the weekend that I look at a lot of conversations that I have with people and think, oh, I'm looking at this in in a view of like, how can I help them? How can I affect them? I, sh- I shouldn't do that. I don't matter. I'm yeah. not important. This is about them and how they can get there. Yeah. That yeah. is really impactful. Let him go control. <gasps> which which oh, is- I no control. Oh. It's a funny thing as, as a therapist and people are paying money to start to get that the people basically know because it's in them and it's they're in their creative brain is in their their lane like they know and so to be like yeah good <laughs> i mean that's a good that's a good job <laughs> yeah well um, oh more no i when you stop recording i have something i want to tell you okay but... all right well i'll stop recording now and um, I was thinking as you were talking, 